I've said it once, and I'll say it again. As a Mopar guy, I'm jealous of the OS. It's a platform you really can't beat. All right, so yeah, we have the late Hemi, right? And they're good motors. They're solid, they're strong. They've got some minor issues that we talked about in other videos. But for the most part, I mean, it's a, it's a good, solid performance base. But like all Hemis, they're big, they're not as plentiful, they're complicated engines, they don't have the aftermarket support that the LS does. So yeah, in an ultimate application, this actually is better than an LS. But when it comes down to like what the average hot rodder can build on a budget using junkyard parts, on, you know, on a budget, because the budget is important. You know, if we had, if we had unlimited budgets, you know, we would just, right? So we're working on a budget. Hemi's hard to deal with. LS is like magic. The closest thing we have to the LS is the Magnum series. And they're good engines. The thing is, they stop at that evolutionary step where, where the LS went all the way with the aluminum heads and the cathedral ports and all of the other things they built into those engines. The Magnum kind of stopped because they went to the Hemi. But every time we do a live or any type of discussion of small blocks, the questions as to what are the exact differences between an LA and a Magnum, what interchanges, what can you work with and whatnot, always comes up. So I figured let's, as long as we have all this stuff here today, let's do a quick rundown on the main differences between the LA and the Magnum. Let's start with the basic blocks. So they're the same size, ball patterns on the back of the same, ball patterns on the front are the same. Head ball patterns, bore spacing, all of that is the same. On, the, on both engines, you have two different series. You've got the, the for, for the LA, you've got the 273, the 318, and the 340, which are the small main bearing engines. You have the same situation with the LAs. You've got the 5.2 is a small main, and the 5.9, the 360 is a big main. So essentially the blocks are about the same. You'll see that the LA motor has one set of ears on it and this is smooth and you'll see on the Magnum you've got the same set of ears that are on an LA but they also added these bosses here for the later model cars. So basically you can bolt an LA, a Magnum into anything an LA fit into. You have a little bit of a problem bolting an LA into anything that came with a Magnum. Okay. On the bottom end, uh, just like the LA motor, the 5.2 Magnum, the 318 Magnum, is internally balanced. So things like flywheels, torque converters, uh, harmonic dampers will interchange between the 5.2, the, 5 the LA, and the 5.2 Magnum, the 318 and the 5.2. You have a little bit of different situation with the 360 and the, the 5.9 Magnum. The 360 is externally balanced. It uses a special damper, it uses a special flywheel or a weighted torque converter. It's the same situation on the 360, but they don't interchange because the Magnum uses a connecting rod that's approximately in size and weight somewhere between the early 273-318 rod and the 340-360 rod. So the balance points are different. The damper is different, the flywheel is weighted differently, the torque converter would be weighted differently. So 360 Magnum rotating assemblies are one thing, 360 LA rotating assemblies are another thing, but they're both externally balanced. Okay, so that's the bottom end. So working our way up, we have again, same, same bolt patterns on the deck, same bore spacing and all that, same deck height. Where you have a difference here is in the oiling. Uh, okay, so here is the oil passage on an LA motor that feeds the rockers. The whole top of the motor is oiled from this boss right here and this boss right here. Okay, And you see that's the oil hole that leads through the cylinder head to the rocker shafts. Magnums, on the other hand, oil through the push rods. And we're going to get to that when we talk about the cylinder heads. So you have the boss here, okay, but it's not drilled through. And here's the one on this side, it's not drilled through. In order to use LA heads on a Magnum block, you've got to use some sort of external oiling to feed the rocker shafts or you've got to drill these passages through which is easier said than done 
And that would only really count, let's say you've got a really nice set of W-2s or, or you know, a, a, a X heads that are just like done to the max and, you know, you want to use a Magnum bottom end, you know, it may be worth it, but generally speaking, no. The lifter angle is the same. It's got a 59 degree lifter angle on both of these engines and it's an odd angle. The small block Mopar is the only engine that you're going to have with that angle. And the reason for that is because this is a throwback to the polyhead days, to the 1950s engines that these things have their roots in, the A motor. So, and they did that because in order for the push rods to operate the exhaust rockers, they had to have this angle right here. So that's why they're laid out. And they, they never changed it on the LA motor and they continued on to the Magnum, stays the same. So Magnum and LA camshafts are interchangeable. The main difference you get into now, and this is where we run into a problem with lifters, or roller lifters. So you see the difference in the height of the boss. So here's, here's the lifter boss on an LA motor, okay? And here's the lifter boss on a Magnum. And you can see how much taller that is. The Magnum, and actually roller cam LA motor, so any LA motor from 1986 and up is also roller cam, have these same taller lifter bores and they have these bosses right here so you see here's a boss these three bosses and this holds down the spider where is the spider here's the spider so the spider and these dog bone assemblies keep the roller lifters from rotating in a magnum or a roller cam LA on an LA motor you have to use a link bar style retro roller rocker. So it's much more expensive and complicated to run a roller cam in an LA motor than it is to run on a Magnum. And the, I'll tell you, the, the lifters that they use on the Magnum, they're stout. You know, you don't, you don't find people having problems with them. So basically, you know, you, you need a camshaft and you're good to go. You're going to spend over a thousand bucks upgrading in LA to roller. So keep that in mind if you're building from this point forward. Uh, distributor holes are the same. The, the distributor drives are the same. They're, they're really, it's, they're so similar. Uh, those are really the main differences. There might be subtle, small things like the Magnum has these extra bosses here that aren't, but these aren't used for our application. They don't really count. That's the bottom end. So now we go to the cylinder heads. And this is what makes the Magnum a Magnum. So this is a 5259 Magnum head. They use the same head for the 318 and the, and the 360, 5259. This is a generic 1970s 360 head. And this one I started porting on, but these end cylinders are stock. Let's start on the combustion chamber side, because this is where you're going to find the biggest differences. So. The generic 1970s, 1980s LA head has a 180 intake and a 160 exhaust. The Magnum head has a 182 intake and the same 160 exhaust. The valve stems are 516, so they're smaller diameter on the Magnum, so that gives you a little bit extra room in the port there. That was, that was one of the nice upgrades between them, but the biggest thing you see right here is the combustion chamber itself. So you see, the Magnum has dual quench pads. It's got this fast burn configuration. So zero decking a Magnum will get you that quench that you're looking for. Whereas you could zero deck a, an LA motor and you don't get anywhere near the quench. I mean, you have to carve the heads where it's really not usable anymore to get down to the combustion chamber where you've got where zero decking would count. Combustion chambers on a Magnum average between 60, 62 and 64 cc's and 10 cc's larger in general on a, on, a, on a LA motor. The LA combustion chamber is slightly wider than the Magnum. You see this little, see where it kicks out here or here? Okay, and you got no kick out over here. So it's just a small difference. You could unshroud this a little bit but I tell you, they work fine just the way they are out of the box. All right, so that's the combustion chamber side. On the intake side, the first thing that you notice 
is that there's no heat crossover on a Magnum. So this is the heat crossover for the choke on an old carburetor engine. The Magnum never came with carburation, so there's no need for a heat crossover on the intake. So they blocked that off, and that's a nice bonus right off the bat. On the intake port, you'll see that, okay, all roller cam small block Mopars, LA and Magnum, have a very severe pushrod angle. Because of that 59 degree lifter angle, the push rod comes out before it can go up. So it takes some space to make that happen. And that push rod intrudes into the port. So you can see here where the push rod on the Magnum intrudes just a little bit more. So here I get my finger in like this. That's as far as I can get my finger in on a Magnum and on an LA, I can go straight in. So you could, you could port, you could open most of this up, but there's still going to be just a little bit more intrusion there. And you can see that the LA head, it's finished just a little taller than the Magnum head. But again, that's just like clean up porting. All right, that's that side. On the exhaust side, you've got pretty much the same exact exhaust. It has the same angle. Now remember the, the Magnum, and the LA have the same valve angle. So this, this shot, this straight shot to the exhaust, which is one of the key features of the small block Mopar, is intact on the Magnum. The porting is a little smoother on the Magnum, like for instance, this is a mid-70s 360 head, so it has these air injection holes, and so there's a little lump in the bottom that you've got to pour it out. Uh, the porting on these isn't, from the factory, isn't as clean as it is on a Magnum, but you can clean them up to be pretty much exactly the same. One of the things you notice with, with when you deal with 1960s, 70s, 80s, Chrysler castings, cylinder head castings, is that they really didn't pay very much attention to detail when they poured these things. So bowl porting and cleaning up really goes a long way. And the inconsistencies between these early heads is off the chain. I mean, it's really bad quality control. Actually, we did a whole video on that at some point. The Magnums will still benefit greatly from clean up, from cleaning up the bowls and whatnot, but they're much more refined from the factory. And also, remember, on the small block on the, on the LA motor, because it has the exhaust crossover, it always has one compromised exhaust port, where it, instead, of, instead of the bowl being a, a guide, the bowl, it's kind of like a pocket, and it, it, it doesn't flow as, as efficiently as it should where on the Magnum, all four exhaust ports are exactly the same, so you don't have that issue with these. Okay, let's go to the top side now. So as we said, when we're looking at the blocks, the Magnums oil through the push rods. So the Magnum uses this style rocker, which is an AMC rocker. These are the same as you find on a 304 or 364 or one AMC. Even the, the 4.0s have these rockers. The LA motor uses a shaft mounted rocker and the LA motor oils the upper end of the motor through those shafts. You don't have that on the Magnum. So now if you wanted to put Magnum heads on an LA block, you've got to use an AMC style lifter. The AMC style lifter is the same diameter as the Chrysler lifter, but it has an oil hole in the center of it and uses a hollow push rod. And that's how you're going to oil the top end of your Magnum headed LA. Going the other way, there's really no convenient way to do it. Uh, you've got to drill those passages or create some sort of external plumbing to get the oil up to the top end of the motor. Um, you can see the, the valve stem, the, the Magnum uses a beehive style spring, the LA uses a regular, you know, conventional style spring. The guides are approximately the same, so you can get from the factory stock, you can get approximately the same lift, approximately 550, 540, 550 lift before you get into where the retainer is hitting the, the boss. So if you prep on one of these heads, just right away, just, just take about a hundred thousandths of an inch off the top of these things, you won't hurt a thing, and you'll have more than enough valve clearance to go almost up to a 600 lift cam. Um, what else is there? They take the same, st same style spark plugs, um, 
valve covers. The valve covers are different. You can see the LA uses five valve cover bolts. They double that up on the Magnum. You can take LA valve covers and bolt them on a Magnum, but you can't take Magnum valve covers and bolt them on to an LA. All right, now, the part of this, everybody seems to have an issue encountering here is that you've got very limited uh, availability of intake manifolds for the Magnum. And the reason for that is the way, remember the ports are laid out the same, but the bolts are different. So on the LA motor, you have two different intake manifold bolt configurations. You've got the 64-65-273, which uses a 5 16 bolt, and it's in at an odd angle. It's at a weird kind of angle. Beginning in 66, all of the LA motors have this setup right here. The bolts go straight in. They're 3 8 and it's just a, a straightforward, very conventional intake manifold mounting system. On the Magnum, they went to this style where the bolt comes in this way. They went back to a 5 16 and they went to the style where it goes in like this. So there are only a, a couple of different intake manifolds that have the carburetor intake manifolds that will directly bolt on here. There's also a couple that have both bolt patterns. And you can take the gasket from an LA motor, lay it over the Magnum, and drill and tap your, your earlier style bolt pattern into it. But that is, that is like the main sticking point when, when trying to outfit a Magnum engine with earlier intake manifolds. And one other thing, cracks. Aye. Okay, so, Magnum heads are notorious for cracks. Everybody's like, oh, your Magnum heads are cracked. They're gonna be cracked. Uh, let's see. Can it be this one doesn't have any cracks? All right. Magnum heads will crack right between the seats at the, sh at the smallest section between the seats, right? Now, that crack does not extend, will not extend into any water jackets. It's a stress crack. It appears only on the surface. Unless you're running huge amounts of boost or an exotic fuel like nitromethane or tons of nitrous oxide through there where you've got that kind of temperature going out the exhaust, they won't torch out. Like for instance, on the Hemi heads, when you run them on nitro, they would crack like that normally, but the crack would torch out because of the nitromethane. On these, the crack doesn't torch out. It just stays put. It doesn't affect valve seal. It doesn't leak any water. Literally, if you, you, you look at half the Magnums that are out there on the road today, have at least one or two cracked combustion chambers, and they run fine, and you would never know the difference. People don't know the heads are cracked until they take them off and send them to the machine shop and the machine shop says, oh, these heads are cracked. I'll take all the cracked Magnum heads you have. Run them. You won't have a problem with it. So that's it. That's the essential rundown on the differences between the Magnum and the LA. And of course, as always, two minutes after I'm done shooting this, I'm going to remember something else. But I think we covered enough. Ground. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.